Okay, let's talk batteries. As you know, you get a couple of these batteries when you first get your heli, and you get this uh, neat little charger. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes to charge one, and if, if you're running two or three or four batteries at a time, it can really slow you down from flying because 30 minutes between batteries is uh, really quite a long time to charge up. The other thing about LiPo batteries is there's actually a, a lot you should know about them. The first thing is that you don't want to keep your battery fully charged. So if you charge your battery at, at the end of the day, you haven't used that battery, you're really supposed to discharge it down to about 3.8 volts, I believe. A uh, fully charged battery is 420 volts and the minimum you ever want to run your battery is 6.3 volts. If you go below 6.3 volts, you begin to damage your battery. And if you leave your battery fully charged at 4.2 volts for a week or, or more, it starts to damage the battery being fully charged. So that was kind of surprising to me. I uh, hadn't heard that before, especially with my little beginner heli. That was uh, not an issue, I guess. One of the first things I did was bought a little tester online. You can find them all over. And I can just quickly, digitally, get a readout of what my battery is charged to. And I think you can see that 4.2 volts, so that's a fully charged battery. So as I'm flying, as it starts to wear down, it'll start to be a little bit less responsive and I'll pull the battery out and I'll check it quick and see what the voltage is and make sure it's not too low and eventually you get to where you learn the sound and how your heli's reacting knowing that you know it's time for charge and don't fly it anymore type of thing because you don't want to damage it. As far as charging goes if you do go ahead and back down and make sure that you're not store, storing them at full voltage and have them in the hold charge, they say that you can actually extend the life of your batteries anywhere from three to four times. So it's probably well worth trying to maintain your batteries correctly and not buy new batteries just because they're overcharged or undercharged type of thing. So as I got into looking at a charger, uh, again, it was a little expensive, but you know I plan to be in this hobby for years and years, so investing in some equipment seems like the right thing to do up front. Long term, I'm going to save money. The first thing you need is a power supply. And it's a 12 volt power supply. I bought this from Hobby King, and it's a 350 watt power supply. It's a little beefier than I really need. These are meant to also charge some of the big battery packs on planes that have multiple batteries in them and need a little more output. Uh, there's some smaller ones, there's bigger ones. This was something I thought long term would, would handle me basically forever. I don't think these things ever break. The next component you need is the actual charger. Okay, This is just a power supply. This is the computer that actually charges the battery cor correctly. It has the ability to charge not only light bulb batteries, but NICAD batteries and all sorts of different batteries. And it's really a nice, sophisticated unit. And the nice thing is, is it will actually decharge your batteries. So let's say at the end of the day you're fully charged on some batteries and you know you're not going to fly for you know, another week. You can hook them up to this device and it will actually back down to the storage level. So that's a real handy aspect of uh, the computer and, and the uh, power supply. Now some people on the web don't want to spend money on the power supply. They go out and, and rip a power supply out of an old computer and do some wiring and hook it up and you can find out how to do that on the web. I didn't want to go through all the hassle. I like a nice looking clean unit. 
instead of a ripped out power supply. If you want to save money, check that out. There, there's ways to do that on the web. Now, it's, uh, when you buy these, they basically come uh, pretty bare bones. And I say that because this power supply, when I got it, didn't come with a power cord. And then it has this strange three plug thing I've never seen. And I was like, you know, man, where am I going to get that? Turns out Radio Shack carries these, no big deal, just go to Radio Shack and, and pick you up a, a plug for it. I guess it sh saves on shipping not to in include the, the plug to it. The, the charger itself came with a couple sets of, of cords with different connections for connecting up to different batteries, different ways to do it. Now, one of the things is it also comes with a cord to, to plug this in to something to power it, okay? Well, unfortunately, it came, this on the ends of this were just clips, okay? And I'm like, geez, that, you know, I really don't want to be clipping that on. I guess I could unscrew these and, you know, clip to it every time, but, you know, it's not really a clean system. And <clears throat> then I noticed that this was able to accept banana plugs. So what I did is I actually took, on this cord, I took these, pulled down, pulled out of the way this plastic piece, pulled it down, and actually cut off the clips on this. And I went to Radio Shack again and bought some banana plugs and attached the wires to the banana plugs. It was just a simple screw-in connection, uh, no big deal. Slip the plastic covers back on. And now these plug in and I have a real nice looking power supply plug for my uh, charger. Okay. Again, I bought the, the Radio Shack plug, so I'll go ahead and plug it in. We'll at least turn this on for you. Okay, so if I turn that on, it comes up. I've already set this to uh, I'm charging LiPo batteries. And if you buy one of these, there are several different brands. I, I really like this particular one, and there's some... Uh, videos out uh, out on the web of exactly how to do all the charging. So I'm not going to go through all the, the programming of it 100%. I'll show you some. But you can find that on, on the web. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a manual. I, I, I don't know why you know something is nice and sophisticated. This doesn't come with a manual saying all the things that you can do with it. But I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out.